Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures, and today's video I'm going to be sharing my spring favorites, all relating to the five senses. So I'm just going to get into it because I can only upload a 15 minute video. So the first thing that I will talk about is my favorite scents and smells for spring. We've been inside a lot, so you know I want it to smell nice in here. And I do like to divide my perfumes and my candles into the different seasons. It's just a, a nice way to create the ambience and the atmosphere at that time of year. So some of my favorite perfumes are this Elizabeth Arden green tea. Um, you'll see that a lot of the themes of the things that I'll share with you right now are light and crisp and fresh and inspired by herbs and gardening and flowers. So the green tea, it's light and fresh. I think that's why they chose, you know, this beautiful color for the cap and something that I really like to wear um, to work because it's not too overwhelming. Another one along the same lines with that fresh, fresh and crisp feeling is this Somerset Meadow and that is by Crabtree and Evelyn. Um, this is a scent that I've, these are all scents that I've had for a very long time and when I run out, I always buy another bottle. And this is Izumiyaki. It's the low to Izzy, um, so kind of like the signature scent. Very, um, it's maybe a little bit heavier than these two, but uh, a little bit more on the floral side as well. So I, I would just describe this as a pretty scent, like if you were going to go out in the afternoon for lunch or something, um, this is what I would wear. I also have some perfume oils. Now, I purchased one set of these at Target um, maybe two Christmases ago for my daughter, and they are so nice. They were $10 for the set, and I bought a set for her, and then I wanted one, and my niece wanted one, so we were able to find them, like, you know, online sites like eBay and Poshmark and Etsy, that kind of thing. Um, so Olivia Care, it's a perfume oil, and this one is Apricot Fig. This is our favorite, and you can see that there are little flowers that are in there. And then there is Jasmine Gardenia. I mean, they all three of them smell amazing and they just have that nice mix of like fruit and flower, perfect for spring and light as well. And this one is French Rose. So none of these scents are going to be overwhelming when you wear them. A candle that I've been enjoying, um, and I think that this is a water lily scent. Um, I, I got rid of the box, so I can't remember, but I picked this up for $4 at a yard sale, and it's just beautiful design. The scent is floral and light. Oh, my daughter brought down hers too. <laughs> She's probably gonna put some on. So the initials underneath are a cursive D and L. And when I have looked these up on eBay, um, sometimes they fall under the name Modern Alchemist, but these are some pretty expensive candles. So when I got this one for $4, um, and I had never heard of them before, I realize now, wow, that was a great deal. So once I burn that, I will keep this and put another candle in there. Um, but if you ever come across one of these at a yard sale or a flea market for a couple dollars, it's totally worth it. The scent doesn't go away. Every time I light it, the room fills with the scent. Because you know how sometimes like wax melts and other candles, it's like you burn it a couple times and you don't smell anything. And the last that I've enjoyed in my water and my diffuser is just lemon. It is so fresh tastes fabulous in your water and I love it when the diffuser's on and the lemon's coming out and the sun is shining through the windows. It just puts you in a fabulous mood. So moving on to taste, I have a snack and a drink. So since we do low carb, I've been trying to keep things around the house that are not tempting and stick with that diet. So nuts have been a great thing if I need to snack on something and I've just really been enjoying pecans. So I like them raw and um, not, uh, not salted, but I think I might play around with some herbs and, and roasting them for a different flavor. Just haven't gotten around to that yet. And the drink is this Kim Crawford. It's a Sauvignon Blanc, so it's not that sweet, but it's also not that strong. It's just fresh and light and crisp. And my husband and I were trying our first bottle when we were out on the porch, and uh, he went on and ordered like 10 more bottles. So it's maybe about $10 a bottle, so it's not that expensive. And this has definitely become our new favorite, um, especially because... It, 
you know, uh, other, other white wines definitely can have a lot of sugar added to them. So I think that this one only has about three carbs per glass. So not too bad. If I recall, that's what my husband told me. So the next thing is going to be Sight, and it's a new TV show that I discovered, or new to me. It's called Rosemary and Time, hence why I'm choosing that for spring. And it is set in England. It was about 2006. I found it here on YouTube, and um, it's it's fabulous quality. I just watch it on my phone or the TV. It feels like you're just watching a regular TV show. They're about 45 minutes long because there's no commercials. And um, the premise is it's two friends who are gardeners. So they get hired to do landscaping and gardening jobs. And every time there's a murder, and they pretty much figure it out before the police do. Um, so if you like Murder, She Wrote, you would absolutely love this. And um, I think because the film quality is better than what we had in the 80s and the 90s when Murder, She Wrote uh, happened. Um, it's just beautiful for the eyes and you get to see the gardens and the cottages of England and the interiors. So I think I'm on my fourth episode and I'm very excited that there are three seasons. So I have a lot of a lot of shows that I can watch. So I'll link um, whatever I can down below and I'll insert a little picture so you can see, um, you know, what the actresses look like. So the next is sound, and for that, it is a podcast, and I know probably a lot of you already listened to it. It's called Homemaker Chic, and I'm really enjoying that right now because it is a new podcast, and the ladies are really into gardening, um, so it's very timely, and since they're talking about the garden, I have listened to it while I've been weeding and planting. I've also been listening to it as I've worked inside the house cooking or um, painting rooms. So the last is feel, and uh, that's always a hard category, but I have picked some clothing pieces. So um, back in my winter edition of this video, I was wearing a black shirt and it was the brand Gibson. And I found that on eBay. I think I paid about $15 for it. It just looked like something that would fit me well. And um, when it came, I loved it. It was perfect. So I went online to find a couple more pieces so this is what the label looks like. Um, it's possibly sold at Nordstrom, so nice brand that can be expensive. I found both of these shirts on eBay with the tag still on for six or seven dollars and then a couple dollars for shipping. So under like $12 to buy these brand new sweatshirts. Um, so I have been loving putting these on with the jeans that I'll share with you to run to the grocery store because that's the only place that I'm going. But it would be a perfect yard sailing, like Saturday morning yard sailing outfit. Just put a t-shirt on or underneath and if you got hot, take this off. But it's not happening right now. So what I really love about these is it's got just a tad of a wider neckline. So I think that that is attractive. And it has this chic little detail here. So I have mine um, cuffed up because I think that the three-quarter length looks better on my arms instead of having it down all the way. So this is a sweatshirt material. And then right here, this is, it's stretchy. So sometimes like women's dress shirts have a little bit of stretch like that. And you can tie it into a knot or a bow. And so it's the contrasting material. And I always think little bows and ties are very feminine. Um, so I've just been cuffing mine up like that. If you liked everything about this, you know, and the fact that it was a three-quarter sweatshirt, you could actually cut it off right there. And then nobody would even know. Um, but I have left them on so far and I really like it. So I normally will tie them twice, but just an unexpected detail. And if you wanted to add like a fancier necklace, you could totally dress this up. But I think it's great for like running your errands, picking the kids up at school where you feel comfortable, but look a little bit pulled together. Um, so I love these. Now, I uh, washed them and wore them and they definitely show washer wear after one time. But I think that just adds to the fact that um, it's just a casual piece like that favorite sweatshirt that you've had for a long time. And if you just kind of wanted to avoid the washer wear, maybe hang it to dry instead of putting it in the, the dryer. So I've been pairing these with these jeans that I bought at a yard sale for like 50 cents or a dollar. I want to say 50 cents. They are a little bit bigger than what I normally wear, but how could you pass up jeans for 50 cents and they're Ralph Lauren. 
Um, so when I got them home, I tried them on and I actually love that they're a little bit looser than my normal jeans. So they feel real comfortable and easy to do those errands in. Like you could wear them all day long. So these are a petite, um, but I wound up cutting them, cropping them a little bit. Um, and I think that this just adds to that kind of casual, casual style, yet a couple unexpected details like this here. And this is not something that I would normally be drawn to, but it's kind of subtle. I mean, I could even pick it off with the seam ripper if I had to, but I like that. And you can let something cover it up or you could tuck a shirt in and let it be seen. So not something that I would normally be drawn to, but I was so happy when um, I got these home because they have been my, my go-to jeans. And even though they're from a yard sale, it's definitely something where I would go onto eBay or Poshmark and type in a description of these if I ever wanted to get a different pair. Last thing I'll share is just something that I've been doing. Um, I have been working from home very long hours, um, but I have been able to get a lot of creative projects done. So just being inspired by the things around our house that happen in spring. So these were daffodils from outside. So I painted this and I used a palette knife for the majority of it to create some texture. And they are on some wood panels. We've had lots of clementines here in my jadeite bowl, so I painted this one. And then some sunglasses. These were my daughter's when she was a baby, and I've hung on to them. They're in her little keepsake box. And then she had a birthday recently, so I painted a slice of her birthday cake, and then you have seen my tablecloth before. So that could be for the eyes, that could be for the hands, it could be for the soul. I hope you en have enjoyed seeing and hearing about my favorites, and um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.